Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. I'm your host Dorian B aka BD3D. I'm the founder and lead developer of the GeoScatter plugin for Blender. And today I have good news for you because GeoScatter 5.5 just hit the shelf. It's a brand new update and there's a lot to talk about. As always, folks, when we drop a new update, we also write a little change logs explaining all the new features, all the improvements and changes, and also the bug fixes. You can check out the change logs on the documentation website, www.geoscatter.com slash documentation, and then click on the change logs page to check out all the different changes and update we released since the very beginning. So if you want details overview please check out the change logs page in this video we will only cover the most important improvements to our scatter pipeline before beginning let's talk about this 5.5 update artwork it's a render made with blender and the geo scatter plugin by environment artist Martin Nota Martin has a YouTube channel and he recently shared his breakdown for this scene. So if you're interested, perhaps it's worth a little detour, check out his channel in the link in the description below. So the first thing we will notice about this new update is that our plugin now supports a new Blender extension system for Blender 4.2 or above. This new extension system means that now you can install our plugin by drag and dropping the zip file in Blender directly, then click on activate to proceed to the plugin installation. Our plugin will then be located on the right panel, known as end panel, as usual. The second thing you will notice is a small change in our plugin interface in terms of cosmetics. Now the main features checkboxes will use icons to better represent the feature utility. If you don't like it, don't worry, you can tweak this interface look in the plugin manager. Now for the major changes. In the distribution panel, you will find three brand new distribution methods. The Bezier area, the Bezier spline and the MTs distribution. With the busy area method, you'll be able to distribute instances within the area of a selected busy curve object. The instances will first be distributed inside the area of this curve, then they can optionally be projected on your defined surfaces along an axis of your choice. The instances will by default take the same rotation of your curve object, but of course you'll have the option to precisely define your rotation in the rotation panel. The main advantage you'll get while using this projection based workflow is that the distribution won't slow down if your terrain size is becoming quite large. Now for the second new distribution method, the busiest plan distribution. Well, it follows the same principle, but instead of scattering on the inside area of a curve, you are now scattering on the geometry of your curve. There are two sub-methods available. Either you place instances on the spline directly, or you can choose to create a pathway of a defined width along your spline. The ability to project this distribution on your surfaces is of course still here and it's even more useful because the biome system also heavily benefit from this workflow. Now when you scatter a biome within the on creation popover menu you can automatically set up a spline distribution giving you the ability to draw a whole biome on a project spline. The third new distribution method is the MT's distribution. This distribution will basically spawn instances into the objects within a selected collection. Some users will find this method quite handy if you'd like to use the powerful procedural features of GeoScatter while manipulating your objects transforms like you used to. Optionally, you are also able to project this distribution on your surfaces. Speaking of distribution, the distributing volume method got an upgrade. The algorithm is now more precise and you have an alternative sub-method where you can distribute following a 3D grid pattern in both local or global space. The camera optimization feature now includes an important new efficient distribution option. 
When activating this option, the scatter engine will first do a check to see which part of your surfaces are seen by the camera before doing any kind of distribution. This will result in major performances improvement when dealing with large terrains that have a good topology. A new ecosystem density rule is now available alongside the attraction and repulsion rules. You will find this new feature quite handy if you'd like to only scatter on scarce or dense areas of other selected scatters. In order to work, you will first need to define an area size in square meter, then define the number of instances that should be present within such areas in order to compute your density threshold. There are new options located in the proximity repel feature to simulate an imprint left behind your animated objects. Optionally, you are even able to fade away the proximity effect to restore the scatter back to its original state after a certain time threshold. In order to use this feature, make sure that your timeline is currently played. These features need an animation to be running in order to work. You will find new smoothing options available for features that are computing your surface's normal angle. The smoothing will be useful if you'd like to use the average direction of your nearby areas. Quite handy, for example, if, if you'd like your scatter to be less affected by the slightest surface imperfections. As you may know, most features of GeoScatter ends with what we call the universal feature mask, handy to specify on which part of your surface a feature takes place. Well, these universal masks got a little facelift and now propose a new image paint option. In terms of data management, the GeoScatter plugin now supports appending or linking scatter data from other files. It also supports various operations such as duplicating scenes or copy pasting with the Ctrl C, Ctrl V shortcut from one blend file to another. This is done completely automatically. You don't have to do anything. The plugin will automatically detect what is happening and act accordingly. And finally, manual distribution mode also benefit from this update, as we added a few new and improved brushes to the tool shelf. The first brush is the line brush. This brush will allow us to distribute instances along a line at equal distances. There are of course options to randomize the position of the instances along this line. While holding the left mouse button, you can use the mouse wheel to control the number of instances that will spawn on that line. There is the new lasso delete brush handy to delete instances located inside a quickly drawn selection area. If you need to push your instances following the movement of your brush stroke, use the push brush. Remember folks, if you need your brush to have stronger effects, you can tweak that in the header. Bonus tip, if you hold the control key while using the brush, you'll be able to push your instances along a line. Following the same principle, we have the split brush. The split brush will either attract or repulse your instances, depending if you press the control key, along the pathway of your brush stroke. Next in line, we have the turbulence brush, useful to randomize the locations of your instances on your surface. Then finally, we have the relax brush. It got way faster. You'll be able to make your distribution seem a bit more uniform in no time. That's it, folks. That's a wrap. Thank you for hanging out until the end of this overview. Please, if you are curious and want to learn more about all GeoScatter features, as always, check out the documentation website at www.geoscatter.com slash documentation. Remember, you can get our GeoScatter plugin on www.geoscatter.com slash download. Our plugin is available for purchase on the Blender market, on Gumroad and on Flip Normal. We hope you enjoyed the new features of the 5.5 update. If you haven't already, check out the 5.4 and 5.3 update on our channel. Subscribe to this channel if you want, and we'll see each other next time. See you, folks.